What it do, y'all? It's the Mama We Made It podcast. You got Nushi in the building. And Roushi. Bada bing, bro. You dig. We out here. Whether it's morning, afternoon, or night for y'all, we got a very special episode for you today. Young Jacob Fisher, photographer extraordinaire, young entrepreneur in the making. Joe, this shit was an insane episode. Man, he, he had me with the quote, and the quote is a tattoo, and the <laughs> tattoo is a symbol. What's it, what's it say? What's stay, it mean? Stay focused, keep aiming. <laughs> Bang. Never stop shooting. And this is literally the tale of a shooter that finally found a target for his bullets. Oof. And what I mean by that is that he channeled his energy of being a black sheep of his family at an early age into finding out who he was. Mm. And that path led him from exploring what he thought his pedigree was in sports marketing and becoming an agent to realizing the power of the camera. And the most beautiful part about this story is like the element of how much determination and focus he had and has currently on himself and himself as a weapon to tackle any one of his goals. And it's an incredible story and I can't wait for y'all to hear this. Bang. Let's go. Ah. Uh. Mama, Mama, we made it. What it, what it, what it do, though? Wow, wow, wow. Lights, camera, fucking action. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Arizona's very own, the young stunner, the genius behind the lens. And a personal, very close friend of mine, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Jacob Fisher in the motherfucking building. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Bro, it's an absolute fucking pleasure. Dude, we've been talking about this for a minute. We finally got this going. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited. As I look at your tattoo of Create on your hand, you know what I'm saying? Look, one of the biggest things that um, really intrigues me about you, Jake, is that you have a very unconventional path to, to where you are now. And I feel like one of the special things about your story is that everything that you've gone through has really been a stepping stone into not only developing your craft, but also understanding who you are mm-hmm. and understanding how your presence within this world will be felt. Mm. And I think that's a really special uh, gift of yours. And I think it's a really special mind state you know, just to start it off from the standpoint of everybody thinks that it's all perfection and it's so daunting. Um, but what they don't realize is just that taking the steps forward, you know, as time passes and if you're taking deliberate steps, you'll look back and say, holy fuck, look how far I've come. No, so true. I mean, this is like your Instagram feed in a sense. You look back years ago just uh-huh. on my work and my editing style, and I look back and I'm just like, damn, I have come far. Right? You know what? I want to speak really quickly on that, and then we're going to get back in, into, into the, the beginning because that's a very critical point, right? And I feel like I've dealt with this a lot in music. Um, you deal with this a lot in any craft. When cats are first starting out, one of the things in a creator's mind is always fuck, like, I know I can do better. Right. So I'm not going to put this out until it's better. Mm. Right? And I think it's very critical that you said that, like, looking back and seeing, like, damn, look how far I've come. Because everybody in a creative world has a masterpiece in the moment. Right? But it's very hard to look at that. You know what I'm saying? What do you think that is that that allows you or or did you also kind of str- struggle with that going moving forward from your infancy of like damn dog this isn't really you know what i'm saying yeah i mean even as a kid like i got a camera over in it's in middle school mm. and i picked it up shot a little bit and thought it was really neat but i was like am i even good for this like it was just for fun yeah and then i just kept doing it on the side and then started seeing you know progression Mm. And people started coming out and talking about, you know what, your work's really good. And I was like, you know what, like, I, I had plans to be a, a sports agent, you know, work in the sports industry. <coughs> like, that was my thing. And I always kind of stayed away from photography as, you know, turning into a, more of a job. Mm. I was afraid to turn that away and, you know, neglect that. Um, yeah. 
you know, just through my career and just, you know, work, you know, graduating college and, and really realizing a little more and more during my summers, I spent more time photographing than, than doing other things. Um, right when I graduated college, I moved to, out to D.C. working for a sports agency. Six months later, I said, I know what I want to do. I know how to do it. Oh, you lit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you Ooh. lit. Now, see, y'all got a little, like, synopsis Ooh. of the whole scenario, but now let's take it back to, to young Jacob Fisher, the kid. Uh, what, what was growing up in Arizona like? Like, how was that? Like, what was family like? Like, what was, what was kind of your passions and your dreams coming up as a kid? Definitely. Um, back in Arizona, I mean, it's very conservative. Everyone, it seems more they keep to themselves. There is no out there kind of thing, like how, you know, New York or Los Angeles or other cities like that. Um, I was a kid who never liked rules and kind of said, fuck the system. Mm. Um, sports kind of kept me out of trouble and, and played football and, nice. um, you know, try to make other teams, but really football was the only thing that I, I could focus on. Um, how, how young were you when you started football? Were you like high a school. pop Warner kid? No, okay. I just pl- played in high school, but all, all before that, it was just me hanging out in the wrong crowd me doing, you know, my own thing. And, and let's the, talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Talk, we want to go young. Yeah, we go like I young. Mean, yo, like even as a kid, like middle school, I go back to elementary. Like I was always getting into detention, suspension. Got expelled from my elementary school for what? Oh, for, for what? For what? what? Are you, is, it, is this like class clown shit? Or are you oh, like, like, are you like uh, tagging up the bathroom? No, nothing like that. Were you crazy? Dennis <laughs> like, no, like, it's like man, I threw a. Banger ass paper airplane at the teacher. Dude, it was like since first grade, same school, kind of like mother's mother, like, you know, daughter, mother's school where you just kind of lead up. And first grade, since till eighth grade, I was, you know, mouthing off the teachers, class clown, being too aggressive. Like, I just hated rules, being told what to do. Yeah. And that would carry back at home and me just not listening. Um, what was that like, the family vibe? Like, <sighs> dude, I mean, I know, like, my parents, I put a lot of stress on them, and there was a lot of fights. Like, my mom and I, we never saw eye to eye. My father and I never saw eye to eye. Like, me and my brother's relationships, like, we wasn't strong. Like, I was the black sheep of the family. Wow. Like, what about, you said you had brothers? Three younger brothers. Three younger oh, You're the oldest. Shit. I'm the oldest of four. Oh, so you're punking them around. Dude, it was a lot, man. It was growing up, being, being the black sheep of the family, you know always having fights like it was a it was a tough being me really? and, and doing How'd that to that my feel f- for you like were you just like resenting <sighs> everything externally or like what was what was like what was going through your your head like it, coming from a scenario where it's just like damn like i'm an outcast here. yeah like, i was just a dumb young kid who just wanted to act out wanted the attention rather than you know think about others Word. um but you know it, 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 got, it got hard i mean almost got shipped out from my house to boarding school. Like, it got close really? to, like, you no longer can be in this family. Oh, wow. Because you are affecting everyone else around you. Really? And I was like, damn, like, buckle down kind of thing. I got kicked out of my eighth grade, um, about three months left. Woke up every morning at my father's business um, and did homeschool on myself. But what would you get kicked out for? <sighs> Just being, you know, it was, a, it was just over the years, just too much aggression. Oh, okay. And it just led up like you've been a bad kid since first grade. <laughs> and, you know, now they brought it's out just the first like, grade. Yeah. Feel, yeah. At eighth grade, they brought out the first grade. It was all the time, like, calling my mom, like, hey, you got to pick me up two hours later. Like, I'm in detention. Um, and so it was just ongoing. Ongoing. And, just and like, then what? eighth grade, it was just like, I was on the radar. And they were like, you can't be back anymore. You're gone. And I was like, damn. Like, missed my Disney trip with all my friends, like, for graduation. Barely almost walked. Like, <clears throat> um, it was crazy, man. Was, now that, it, was that a wake-up call for you? Or did, did Yes and no. Okay. Like, it, it was one of those things, like, it was just middle school kind of thing. Yeah. And, like, hopefully I'll get, a, like, a clean start in, in, like, high school. But I was, like, this was a private Christian school, like, from the get-go. Like, mm. I was one of those bad kids. Like, they knew who Jacob Fisher was. <laughs> yeah. And, like, he was a bad kid kind of thing. But graduated, got yeah. that over. Now I'm trying to like transfer up to high school. You know, they had relationships with the high school. You know, got accepted, got in, and just you know did my thing. I kind of stayed under the radar. Oh, so you kind of shaped up when it came to high school a little bit. A little bit. I mean, I was still the class clown, still getting detentions. I mean, not as much anymore. But it was me struggling, trying to like 
get through school and try to like figure out who I was because I really didn't know who I was. And I thought I was a pop rock kid who tried to play guitar, did not play guitar. Yeah. You know, I always thought I was a skateboarder, wasn't a skateboarder. <laughs> and I thought I was a jock trying to hang out with the cool kids, wasn't that either. I just kind of stayed low key and was just, you know, right out through high school and mm. just did my thing. But then it wasn't until, you know, graduating high school, I was like, you know what, like, I don't want to go to community college. Like, I wanted to buckle down and go to university. Mm. Like, that senior year, I just got straight A's and B's. I wanted to bump up on my GPA. I wanted to get into university, and I wanted to figure out myself. Mm. And so, you know, moving out two months early before college started to live up near my college, kind of get familiar with the, the university, um just kind of took over from there. Like, I knew what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be in sports, and, you know, I worked hard. I took summers off and, and did summer school, lived on campus, and I just, you know, grinded and did it in three years. And then the whole journey. What, what, what was your motive for, like, doing it in three years or, or doing it as fast as you possibly could? I kind of wanted to do it as I wanted to prove something to myself first and then kind of prove it to others. Like, I was that rambunctious kid that, that that kid always got in trouble to go through college and, and kind of create a name for himself mm. and you know do something big and you know kind of prove your family like you could do something and that's my first tattoo is family in hebrew like that's you know that's the first people who i heard you know all the way up to high school mm. you know hurting them you know just like just disappointing them mm. and then you know started seeing change and started seeing you know progression and you know figuring out myself, which led to, you know, making them happy and, and accepting because, you know, all those 18 years, it was tough to, like, be me and, and not, you know, neglect how they feel mm. and turning it to something where I could be, you know, their son, where they, you know, they're proud of me kind of thing. Absolutely. It's interesting that you didn't want to go to community college. Like college, like, played this huge important thing. Were you, like, one, well, first que- first question were you academically, like, did you do well academically throughout school, or that would that know, suffered man. too? That okay. was, so that, that was I was not a right. smart kid. Like, <laughs> it's either I was. Well, a were smart you not a kid. smart kid, or you just fucked around? I fucked around. All right, because because you you say you got A's and B's, so you, you, I, I you mean, could I, be a I, smart. I could grind if when I put my mind down, to when it. You buckle down, yeah. I just my priorities was not that. I think Word. it was just always myself as being that kid that said fuck the system kind of thing and. You know, I want to make my own rules. Like, I hated being told what to do. Yeah. Totally. And I still do. But the college that. came at, like, this in this, this I important... learned responsibility. And I think the biggest thing was me getting out of the house and learning to be on my own. It's such a Man, that's been such, like, a, a, a pivotal point for so many of our guests is going to the college. We just saw it with our last guest. It's like you you get this moment where you're free. Yeah. You you can it's, it helps with your identity like mm-hmm. when you're in the home you're like you're your family's identity mm-hmm. yeah now when you're, you're under what, the roof you're under the roof now when you're out you're like oh shit if i act like a dumb fuck that's how yeah. like actual people will think i am it's like and i take the responsibility exactly. no one else kind of gets that whole feeling i want to kind of touch on the fact of like because it seems like through high school you were kind of more present in knowing that you wanted to find out more about yourself yeah right and I feel like at that age, especially in that stage of our lives, you know, we're all kind of searching for who we are. Like, what what were the things that were going through your head and what, what, what were the things that you were doing actively trying to, like, figure out who you were? Yeah. I mean, even, like, the small things starting off where even though I'm a social person, like, through situations like asking your girl to dance, like, that was really tough for me to do. Mm. And I never went to prom, never went to, high, like, homecoming. Like, those are things I, I was afraid of. I just hated rejection. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, but, I mean, it was me trying to figure out my crowd and, like, who would I fit in and trying to be me. And I always, like, I never really did well with the whole being you kind of thing. And, like, mm. my dad always told me as a kid, for years, he's like, I love when you are you and when you're you. Like, everyone around you loves you for being you. Mm. And it never really stuck to me until I went to college where it was like, you figured out, like, damn, like, people really do like you just for being who you really are and not trying to act like someone else. Because I try to act like other people and try to fit in those groups. Cause yeah. I thought that's deemed to be, you know, acceptance. Yeah. But... That's not something that clicked until, like, college. Where I, was I feel just, like a lot of kids get sucked up in that. You know what I'm saying? Because especially, like... In those times, it's very clicked up. Like yeah. you're, you're, you're a part of a certain identity, and especially when you're not as strong internally to yeah. like say, you know what, 
this is who I am. If you don't like me, fuck you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's more like, this is who I am. This is who y'all are, but I need to change myself to fit in. Yeah. And, and one of the, like, I feel like that's a supreme downfall in, in like the youth stages of so many people's lives is that you begin to lose yourself before you even have the opportunity to like understand your independence, if you will, as a human being. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man. There was there was one time in high school for me where and this was actually like a real like pivotal changing point like where I truly was like really thinking about who I was right because sometimes we're just on autopilot in life like we're who we are yeah what what more is there to that when we're young like that you know what I'm saying and I remember you know I had a close core group of friends um, I was one of those rambunctious ass kids as well, but like did well in school. My parents literally said, get good grades, we don't care what you do. So if you give me that, like I'm gonna get good grades and don't give a fuck what I do. Mm -hmm. um, had a click of, of kids, you know, was cool with everybody, but it started coming where it's like, yo, like the homies aren't hitting a motherfucker to go out. Like what's going on? I'm getting calls from, from different homies and, you know, I'm sitting at home on certain like Friday, Thursday nights being like, yo, like, why, why aren't y'all hitting me to go to the football games? Like, what's going on here? So one day I finally manned up to just be like, what the fuck is going on? Because I used to get a ride to school every day with these cats. Some of them were a year older and, and others were in my grade. Um, and it came out and like, I was like, bro, what the fuck is going on? Like, y'all just acting really weird. This is like, you go to lunch and you see people just like, not really interact mm -hmm. with you as, as, as yeah. they would. And, there's snickering here and there. <clears throat> and me, like, it took me a while being the loud mouth that I am, but, like, when I did, I was just like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, what's going on? And this conversation literally changed my trajectory. Yeah. Because what I was told was, like, bro, when we go out, you just get way too much of the attention. Like, all the attention's on you. Like, we feel like we're in the background. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, whoa, like, I never saw it that way. But in my head, I was, I told him, I was like, bro, like, is this because, like, you think I'm doing this on purpose or it's just happening? Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's just happening. But, like, you need a change if you want to kick it with us. Yeah. And right then, it's just like, wait. So you're saying to kick it with y'all, I need to change who I am to fit in? Mm -hmm. And literally, they were like, in unison, Yeah. <laughs> And I had a pock moment where I was just like, fuck you, yeah. fuck you, fuck you, you been a bitch. Don't want you guys got sickle you. cell or something. Yeah. But from that day forward, I was like, yo, fuck all this bullshit. Yeah. Like, fuck all of y'all. Like, I'm way too special. Like, it, it's like literally like in a moment where you find your worth. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And after that, it was just like, yo, like, you start to realize and, and everybody says this, but I feel like it's so hard to, to actualize. Like, focus on yourself and everything else will come. Exactly. So, true, right? so fucking true. But it's so fucking true, but how hard is it? Man. So hard, man. Yeah, brutal, brutally hard. You feel what I'm saying? Dude, I, I had a similar experience in high school, too. Like, I went, I was in eighth grade. I was, like, a huge skater. Like, very much into punk, but really, like, and then you go into high school. I had one of the schools where, kind of like you, like, yeah. middle school, then everyone goes everyone to high school. Everyone knows everything. Like, they still remember the same thing you're doing in first grade. They really do. So it's kind of tough to be, like, new in you when yes. everyone's still, like, that's not you. No, so, like, the first day of high school, it was like, okay, I'm going to kick it with the skater crew. And then it was those people plus the people from the other schools in this district. Yeah. And there was, like, the skater crew. And... Within, like, a few months, I just was not fucking with them. It wasn't about, like, skateboarding anymore. It was about, like, partying and uh, just doing drugs and shit that, I, like, I wasn't really into as a kid. I just yeah. wasn't. And it just became super degenerate. Like, these kids were getting in fights and stuff at, like, parties. It was just, like, not my crowd. I was like, yeah. hey, guys, let's go, like, fucking kickflip over that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, let's build yeah. a half pipe. Come on. What are you guys doing on the weekend? And... I, so slowly I started cutting myself out of that because I was like, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't so many days between that period where I was like alone at lunch and shit. And I knew so many people from school, from growing up, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have a crew or yeah. a clique. Yeah. Like my friends here, they were like, 
the sports people. Yeah. These were the skater people. Those were like the nerds now. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I feel you, but I can't really. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if like I want to join that. I fuck with y'all. Yeah. I know what y'all yeah. going through, but. <laughs> exactly. And like, like you said, there's that moment where you don't really know who you are. And I just turned to sports. I like joined the track team, joined the football team, made close friends. Like, yeah, I'm going to go to the weight room. Yeah. Oh, you lift weights. And then you just start to find another crew and start to fit in. But there's always, I feel that moment in high school where there's some identity change sure. most of the time with a lot of people when you're trying to find yourself. I mean, I feel like the cool kids who go into high school, like they're set all four years. They Nothing are. to worry about. Yeah. They're good in school. Yeah. You know, they have a successful high school. But then in college, I feel like it just kind of takes down. Like, that was their hype. Yeah. And for, like, myself, it's me up, fighting, bro. me dealing with all that shit. The moment I moved to college, it was a brand new start. You know, knew nobody, you know? It was me to be me kind of thing and start fresh. Like, yeah. with all the past, it was nice to, like, literally cut what happened from up to high school and say, <coughs> that's no longer me. Like, yeah. I want to do me. I want to do... I want to do something new. I like, you know, let's try this whole beat you yeah. out kind of thing. Yeah. And you can. And it worked. <laughs> was was your college far away from where you grew up? About 25 minutes. Word. Not bad. But Word. you but you still moved out. I still moved out a couple of, like a month before college moved out or about to start. I got I finessed in my way and early, you know, early check in, hang yeah. out with my new roommate, you know, hang with the soccer kids. That's where I lived with. Um and then it just kind of clicked. Like I always, every new, every year, I just knew all the athletes. I was a cool kid. Like everyone seemed to like love me. They called me a little sexy back in college. Oh, like, the little like, sexy. <laughs> what it do though? <laughs> my, my, my big roommate, my, my roommate for the first year, it was big sexy. He was a goalie for, for my college. <laughs> so I was a little, little sexy. sexy. I was his little bugger. protege. But it like built that. me up. But like I literally just did me i was just i, I know i know to prove it to myself what that do for your confidence because i feel like it's one of those things where you're like you the black sheep you acting out you still a little yeah. sexy but like now you became little sexy you <laughs> know what i'm saying it was nice to feel accepted it was nice to go places go to parties go to class and yeah. like everyone's saying what's up everyone wants to eat with you everyone's like hitting you up to hang out like it was nice to be the cool kid Word. and like it was something i wasn't used to mm. like yeah it was nice for the you know, kind of boost the ego, but at the same time, like, I really understood, like, you're on your own, you're being an adult, and, like, who do you want people to remember you as? And, like, mm. you know, just being you. <laughs> Must have also felt like you belong now. Exactly. You know? Like I, I, like, I felt like I fit in everywhere. Everywhere I went, someone accepted me, and I was able to be me and have fun, and, like, I never felt alone. That's a liberating feeling, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, because I look back, and I look, and I'm like, am I having any, any friends back from middle school, and down there like i don't talk to any of them mm. like i really left high school like not being homeless with anyone wow mm. so it's kind of just like that whole uh, up to 18 i was like dude fuck those years man that was tough i wow. feel you it's not like i look back and be like oh i, I miss those years like yeah. Yeah, there were some good moments but like end of the day like do you feel like looking back at those years though like it truly allowed you to become who you were who without you a doubt are. if i was a different kid and kind of like Applied to the system, yeah. I don't think I'd be where I am today. Mm. I mean, taking a whim and, and you know moving out to D.C. I mean moving out back to Arizona, back to L.A. Like people who are very conservative are afraid to do that, and yeah. I was willing to put myself out there and move out to totally different you know states, and knowing be, hardly and anyone, but just pursuing something that I thought <coughs> would be better for myself. Lit. So in, in college, you were pers pursuing sports. Pursuing sports, did you, yeah. Did you go in there knowing what you wanted to do? Was it like yeah. your, your plan? Your, yeah. You know I mean, I grew up down? in the sports industry. My dad, um, used when I grew up, I grew up in Chicago for a little bit. He worked for the Chicago Cubs. Mm. And then even as a baby before that, he was at the PGA Tour. So I was always surrounded by sports and then moved back to Arizona. Mm. He started his own physical therapy athletic training facility. Working with professional athletes, um, you know, football, baseball, all that sorts. And oh, I just wow. loved, you know, being around those athletes. Like, I didn't even mention it, but um, when I got kicked out of my middle school, Donovan McNabb was my, my principal. He would come in in the morning, sit me down, call Camp Get Right. He would talk to me for like an hour. <laughs> Camp the Get It Right. Up. Yeah. Camp Get Right. Yeah. Yo, what was that like? It, it, I mean, it was cool. Like, I grew up around athletes, but I didn't see them as like these celebrities like they yeah. talk to me like 
uh, straight up fucking human beings. Yeah. And it was cool, like, someone big as Donovan, like, during that time to, like, really look down at me and be like, you got to get your shit right, man. But he took passion, like, into, like, what I wanted to do. Wow. Like, he, like, he really, like, took some of his time to, like, be with me and, like, sit down and, like, I learned a lot. Like, even though I woke up at 4.30 in the morning every morning to go to my dad's facility to him open up shop, like, I was doing school on my own. I was teaching myself, and then lunchtime, Don would come in and just sit down and mentor to me. It's crazy because it's, like, obviously Donovan and your pops had a, a really good relationship, right? Sure. I like, mean, I mean, a like lot of people have brother. come around. Like, yeah. you had Randy Johnson. You've had a lot of big athletes. So I was kind of that kid who saw these athletes as friends and yeah. still great friends who I talked to. Absolutely. But it never was one of those things. Like, it was like, I look up at some, some celebrity or idol. Yeah, right. But like someone with that kind of, a, like, that kind of authoritative figure and, and having that plateau, I mean, that, that platform <coughs> of success, you know, yeah. really taking interest in my life. Like, people really do like me for me. And that kind of was like. That's ooh. really special. Yeah, bro. man. That's really special. So talk to us about this like path towards sports. Sure. Um, so like like I said, growing up in sports, I mean, that's what I thought I wanted to do. Right when I moved to my college, they just opened up their new um, sports uh, sports marketing um, program, mm. and so you know, got really interested in it. Um, was it exciting you at that time? Definitely. Like I kind of like knowing knowing what I wanted to do at that time and finding a purpose and what I wanted to do. Mm. I was well connected. So I really felt like I'm going to do this, get out, get a job and start making something for myself. Cause and the day it was kind of proving to people like I fucking made it. Yeah. And so that's why right. I hustled, man. I got in and out in three years, graduated early. Like I thought I wanted to be an agent. Word. Wait, now during this time or this whole time, <coughs> where's photography for you? Um, dude, photography was just, you know, I had my camera, I had it all through college. I would, you know, photograph almost every day during the summer. Um, when I was living on campus, it was just me in my own apartment. And what I found fun after I like, finished my work was, you know, tr go drive around Arizona and find some spots. And it was a lot of lonely shooting, but it was nice just to clear my head and, and just focus on me and photograph. I, you know, I would take some photos of, you know, headshots here and there and, you know, just, make some extra cash but it was just one of those things like i had the eye for it and i understood it mm. but it wasn't one of those things like i was huge into mm. i had my instagram since 09 um and through high school you know just just posting bullshit but then i started posting some photos and that really started picking up people started in, you know getting interest in just my life mm. and it was weird to like get that attention you know i really didn't pick up till college <coughs> where Instagram started picking up and yeah. people started reaching out and just liking my photos. And it was weird to like have that feeling of being neglected and not fitting into random people, like really fucking with you that you didn't even know. So it was like that weird feeling, like you're getting all this love from random people. So it was like one of those things like I wanted to keep pushing. I want to keep posting content, like kind of like drove me to like create images to, to show people and kind of get that love back. Yeah. But I was doing it for the wrong reasons. But was it still like just a hobby though? It was still a hobby. That's crazy because that's a hell of a hobby to just like those. The pictures you take are incredible. Like I've seen your Instagram. It's From insane. now, back then, yeah. man, I look back at that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's like sucks. It's like the the filter with the border. It, dude, know. it was it was all the, <laughs> the white border. It was the Instagram filters. I mean, yeah, the, it, the white border. Yeah, it really didn't click until. Like, my grandma, my dad's mom, like, she was heavy into, like, you know, f photography and, and collage. And she got me my own first camera. We went to New York. And I remember taking photos. And I remember this one photo. It was me taking a photo at the streetlight. And it was facing one way and then facing out the other way. And I got it the right time where both were red. And I was like, damn, that is sick. That's and I had to lit. show everyone. <laughs> that's when, like, photography kind of was, the red? like, <laughs> I was that's when photography kind of, like, kicked. I'm like, I kind of like this. And I always kind of always had a camera every once in a while and, you know, took photos. But I mean, so why, why didn't you think during college you could actually make this a career or go like even in high school, take photography class or definitely. pursue that? A lot of people did. I, I was just being, you know, I was just thinking logical. Like, how can I make a, a path for photography? Like, I didn't think that would be, you know, a high paying income. Like, mm. I, I didn't see that as, you know, like a, a, a very successful career. Like I wanted to be successful. I wanted yeah. to make a lot of money. I wanted to make a name for myself. 
because growing up, it, it mean it was always a comparison between my my, my younger brother and I. You know, he was the smart one, mm. and he was getting the good grades. There's and it, always one. Yeah, man. <laughs> <Yo. laughs> it was like a competition. And Word. then growing up, like seeing my dad so successful, I wanted to kind of prove a point where I want to get out. I want to create a name for myself, and I always wanted to be like. Hey, that's not Brett. That's Brett Fisher's son. I want to be. Hey, that's Jacob Fisher's dad, kind of thing. Yeah. And the craziest yeah. thing happened about yeah. six months ago. My dad got an intern, and she goes, "Wait, are you Jacob Fisher's father?" And he called me, and I said, "No way, did I have that? <laughs> that is something I've been thinking about for years, <laughs> Mama, Mama." For that's real. Lit. For that's real. Lit. Yeah. So what? Then what was the soiree in the into the? Athletics, sports marketing, sports agency. Like yeah, what? I mean, I just understood business. I just yeah. love the idea of marketing and mm. even marketing for an athlete or just, you know, advertisement. It was so neat, and I was well-connected. I mean, I had a lot of good family friends who, who were agents for a lot of athletes, and yeah. I was like, this is something cool. Like, I got to travel. Yeah. I, I got to do all that stuff because traveling was always a big passion of mine. Being able to travel and go to see games, like, I loved football. And it's a very flashy lifestyle. Like if you're if you're a boss agent, like you're you're on the cusp of just like everything. Yeah. But it, the whole idea of like you getting a big player and you signing a big contract, like you make a percentage, like you own a couple of those, you're gonna have a nice life. Yeah. And I always wanted to like be successful, not stress out, <laughs> but like it was it, it was a grind. Like it was a, a good job where you're oh, grinding sure. and you're dealing with bullshit. And I thought that'd be a cool lifestyle. But moving to D.C. and learning the basics of, you know, digital operations, I was like, I don't know about this, man. So why, why D.C.? Why not like L.A. or New York or um, other big sports Just through hubs? family friends. Uh, the sports agent who used to be the agent for Randy Johnson, uh, mm. he's one of the higher ups at the digital, um, actually one of the baseball. And this is Randy Johnson with the yeah, mean ass arm. Yeah. yeah. Old family friend. But his agent worked at um, Octagon. He's like, hey, like. Send over your resume, and I got you know the, the the internship job. I moved out to D.C., and it was a six month you know you know piece. And I was like, you know what? I mean, I had my fun in the first month. It was I thought an it was internship. It was an internship to turn into a job kind of thing. Got gotcha, you, yeah. And I was like, you know, living to a new city. I was learning. I, I was you know on the weekends I would explore you know downtown D.C. Like I thought that was fun, but months goes on. I'm like, I'm not having fun, man. Why? It was just I just wasn't feeling you know, content. And I don't think like that was something I wanted to do. I didn't think that would make me happy. Like it was a grind, but it, I was not enjoying myself. End of the day, like I want to think about myself and I want to like make sure I'm happy in the day. Yeah. But what wasn't making you happy? Like, let, let's go in a little deep on that because as an internship, number one, you're going to be doing this shit work. Like no matter where you go, you're not going to be bossing out like yeah. at a job. You're going to be filing. You're going to be getting like coffees. Yeah. You're going to be building a filing cabinet and then put files in that cabinet. <laughs> and you're, you, but, but you're going to be learning and you're going to be around people who've yeah. been doing it. So it's not necessarily going to be great out the gate, but was it something just beyond the work that wasn't fulfilling you? I or? think it was more of just the directions. It's just like mm. being told what to do. Oh, like going back to that, like end of the day during my work, like I was, you know, during my career, I'm supposed to be working, doing internship. I'm on Instagram, you know, I'm, I'm reaching out to people. I'm, I'm doing my own work. And at the same time, I couldn't manage and, like, do my sports marketing, you know? Mm. And so, like, even though I was at work, I was still trying to do Instagram. I was true trying to do social media. Like, I was trying to build my brand during the day. But at the same time, I'm, I'm working for these athletes. Got it. And, you know, months goes on. I'm just like, this is not making me happy. I'm distracted. Like, my worth ethic is no longer there, like, it was just too much to handle. Like the moment I got home, it was nice to like get out of there and not be told what to do and just kind of do me. So I guess it always kind of came back from me being a, a young ignorant kid to be told what to do and just, you know, do what you want to do. But I feel like the separation now as you got older is like that, that kid, that rambunctious kid was being that way just because he understood who he was. Yeah. So you were, when you were at your internship, when you say, you know, you were building in, on Instagram and reaching out and all that. Were you reaching out with the intention of, like, shooting? Were you reaching out to, to shooters? Was that, was it? Like I was doing realm? both. I was, you know, reaching out to big shooters, like, big Instagram photographers, you know, collaborations on, on, you know, when I'm learning how to reach out to brands for these athletes, 
I was doing it for myself. Lit. And, you know, just they always say every hundred likes you average seven followers. Like I was just trying to be out there. I was just trying to engage, you know, reach out to people, you know, find shooters, even in DC, just to stay busy. Cause you know, and the end of the day I lived out in Ashburn, which is like about 45 minutes from downtown DC. So every night when I got home, I unpacked, I unwind. I always seemed to go be back in DC and photographing with people. Like that was my passion. And I started realizing it more and more. Like this is something I enjoy. Lit. That's interesting to be hustling the, the Instagram and shooting and doing all this and even be distracted enough by it while you're working and still not thinking like this could be a career. It, I felt like it was still. holding me back. And I think that was part of it, too. It was yeah. like, why am I out in D.C. where I hated D.C., man? Yeah. I was like, I'd rather be doing this in Arizona, you know, more opportunity. My friends are there. Like I was lonely, but at the same time, like I felt like that work was holding me back to like photograph or like I can't shoot out late. I got... You know, I got work in the morning and I had to yeah. go drive far out. Like, it was tough to dabble all that. I think that's why when November, you know, December came around, I was ready to get back home and just do photography. But, like, told my parents about it and they were like, they didn't understand it. Like, for months, they were like, how are you going to make an income? Like, just through photography. Was, they, they didn't understand that. Like, no one it, really understood that. Before we get into that, was there ever a moment, though, where you were going to say, you know what, I got to give up photography and I got to do this. When you were like making that decision, you either pursue, pursue photography not, not in the back of my mind. I mean, no, I enjoyed so my, yeah. On. Yeah, once you decided it, it was I on. think even when I was That's in wild. D.C. and I broke one of my cameras and it, it fell apart, I was so eager to buy another one. Like I knew like, that's something I wanted to do. Like I was mm. posting almost every day on my Instagram. Like it was building. And yeah. I, I couldn't. I couldn't wait. You can't ignore that. So many people have this fire in them and yep. choose the conventional route. I have no problem with the conventional yeah. route. I like yeah. do you if that's what you want to do. Absolutely. But I think one of the most challenging things is having that calling, having that fire in you that's driving you to do something else, and purposely like ignoring it or pushing it down, and forcing yourself to do this thing just to pay bills. Yeah. Or, and you live in this kind of like ongoing unhappiness because you, you never fulfill that thing inside sure. you. Because it it's, it's scary. It's scary to say like, fuck it, I'm doing this. Yeah. And also, I want to ask you something. You, you obviously came from an affluent family. Yeah. Right? Um, and, you know, you seem like a, you're a fucking rebel, flat out, Right. Were you were you financially taken care of? How that how like were your like during college? Like, did you have an allowance? Did you like do all these certain Dude, things? I don't remember the last time I got an allowance. I mean, growing up, I mean, I remember probably up to middle school, I got some money here and there. Yeah, but that really wasn't it. Like, my brother got his cell phone before I did. My first phone was with I didn't have a camera on it, but I was as that kid, you know, even in high school, like I wanted to make my own money. Like, I loved the idea of. My parents are always there for me, but I never took advantage of of them because even though I've done so much towards them just through my actions, I never yeah. wanted to take advantage of them financially. Mm. Um, you know, I found my ways. I, I signed. Fl- I was holding signs, one hundred ten degree on a Saturday oh, morning. You were doing the flipping. I was flipping, bro. Were you lit at it? I lo- no. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would no, flip he was it. One of those guys who would drive by and be like, "Oh, come on, bro." Yeah, I would. I, like, can I get just one like three sixty? Yeah. I was trying to flip. It? I would drop in. I'd be like, "Yeah, that's not for me." <laughs> and then I would pick up, you know, doing ref for, for flag football. Like I try to find my opportunities, you know, that's to make money. Because one of the biggest things is I feel like, you know, especially you know, you hear all these stories about rags to riches, and then, you know, you see. And it's just commonplace in yeah. that growing up when things are handed to you, sure. right? It's like there's a drive factor sure. that's missing, yeah. right? Rarely do you have those instances where, you know, you can come from money, you can go on family trips and all that and experience, you know, a good life, but sure. also for the kid to just be like, you know what, like, I want to make a name for myself. Yeah. And I feel like it's very few and far between. Mm -hmm. Like there's those cases where it's like the son's growing up and like their dad is super prominent. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? 
fuck this. I don't want to be his son. Exactly. Right? I'm me. Y'all going to know who the fuck I am. Exactly. Right? And then there's other kids. It's just like, yeah, you know, like, I got the credit card on blast. Like, I know kids to this day, bro. They're like through college, even now, it's like they got the family credit card. Hey, and it's just like, bro, like. Of course. How comfy. And, and they're so comfy. It's like you see these cats, they balling out. But then when you, when you kind of look internally, it's like you ask yourself when you're alone, when you look in the mirror, like, are you happy? Sure. Because I feel like there's such a, it's such a gift, whether it's a struggle to like, do it on your own, mm -hmm. right? It's it's a blessing to know that you have parents that are there for you. Of course. You know, but like to be able to fall on your own, I feel like it builds so much character. Of course. And allows so much internal growth as opposed to knowing that every time you fuck up, somebody's there to pick you up. Exactly. I mean, I think, I think, I mean, I'm glad like that my past it was my past and I never wish anything else differently because my past, I felt like I was taking a lot of things, even financially as well, even if I wanted it. Mm. That's not what it was me. I had two jobs in college. I worked for my marketing department at, at Grand Canyon, and I was, you know, work, helping, um, you know, team manager for the wrestling team, you know, washing laundry, you know. I found ways to make money. Yeah. Because I love the self-accomplishment of providing for myself. Mm. And, you know, yeah, and that was something nice to see in the day, like, I work hard for my own money and, yeah. you know, spend my own money. You know the value of it. And I knew what I wanted it's like, to do. like, fuck, I'm working my ass off and I get this much? Fuck. It was, it was a lot of self-accomplishment, man. Yeah. yeah you and also got to drop your ego with that, too, yeah. because, like, you know, that that's the other half of it, not being too proud to flip a sign or do laundry yeah. or, like, throw For that, real. like, be like, there's, I mean, there's so many people that can go, like, man, I, you know, I'm so broke, I can't afford this. Yeah. But won't actually take those type jobs. Like, well, no, I'm not going to do that. I, I, like, I'm, how I, would my friends see me if, like, they saw me flipping signs? Yeah, like, you know what I'm oh, oh, I'm better than that. No, I can do And maybe they are, but when you need to make money, you kind of just have to do what you got to do yeah. and not have that ego. Just focus on making your money. And, yeah, maybe you'll do something better eventually. But there's so many people that do live in that that aren't willing to, like, go there. Because, mm -hmm. and I think that's a testament to, to your journey of yourself of like, look, you're going to go out on your own. And this is part of the step of the first step to go do what you want to do is knowing that you will do whatever it fucking takes to survive. Yeah. Like you have to survive in that fucking desert until the rain comes. Sure. And it, you might have to do some really dirty shit <laughs> and get dirty and yeah. like whatever job, whatever thing you have to do. But a lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah. They want to just wait and take the safe, secure job or do something that pays a decent salary sure. or th they don't want to flip a sign. Yeah. You know, but if you're like, fuck it, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. I'll change wrestlers, fucking dirty ass singlets. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'll also, you know, but, and then you learn the value of a dollar though. Yeah. You know, very quickly mm -hmm. and how far that dollar can actually, I got you. used to a lot of tough love growing up. And I mean, I, even though I was a tough kid to you know work with and and you know was a tough one to my family, it, it paid out to be that ignorant kid who wanted to keep working hard for himself. Word. And it's crazy doing that, knowing that you could ask your parents for money. Yeah, that's the wild shit. There's yeah. people that don't have that option. Yeah. So I couldn't imagine just <laughs> asking for that after so, all, like after <laughs> the black sheep, like putting them through that much, yeah. and then asking them for more. And what's crazy is during that too. When you do do that and, and go off on your own and figure things out, it's actually those qualities you learn during that yeah. is what actually makes real success happen later. We hit rock bottom too many times, and then you got to figure out how to come back out of it on your own. And you're not fucking scared to go back there because you've been there and you know how to survive in that. Mm -hmm. So it makes like your risks feel... You say, well, like, what, what's the worst thing that can happen? I already yeah. did this. Yeah. Like, I already yeah. been there. I'm, I'm already, I'm all, yeah. I almost got kicked out of the house. Like, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? And you know how to make your own money if you if you really really need to dude i remember even as a kid like working at my dad's shop during the summer just giving out massages make a little price sheet printed out like i was an entrepreneur trying to make money <laughs> yeah, you know you, i got bro. banned from uber because i shared it too many times to too many friends i had like 200 free rides woke up one day my accounts deactivated wow. when the cash app first came out where you send the uh link to someone they yeah. download it both people get five dollars yeah 
I made like 500 bucks. Wild. And then they try to make $5 a minimum. Well, I did that too. And now it's like there's a certain minimum, $50 minimum to get the $5 thing. Like I found ways to make money. That's yeah. fucking lit. What, so when you came back, knowing you wanted to do photography, right? And also having that conversation with your parents, like they obviously don't get it. Like what? And it's obviously not, yeah. not something that's tangible at that point. Sure. What, what, what was your approach? It was you come back to the house and, you know, you're kind of back in our rules and you need to actively search for another career. And, you know, I, I did that. You know, I, I, I don't like shaving my face. I went to interviews. I shaved my face and you know, I got cleaned up. And I respected, you know, just to try one more time, maybe get a job in Arizona. And then after the first interview, it was like some bullshit, like direct TV sales stuff. I'm like, this is not what I wanted to do. But then I still had that back of my mind, like I love photography, but I was so afraid to make it a career for mine and, mm-hmm. and hate something that kept me out of trouble or it gave me that happiness, you know. But there was just a time and I said where I'm saying, fuck it, you know, I'm in my parents' house. I have no rent over my head. You know, I have, you know, my car to pay for, little things like that, which I can easily pick up a job at my dad's place, make some extra cash. Yeah. But then it was just wake up every morning on my own, you know, hop on my computer, reach out to 15 brands a day and just create my own, like, marketing strategy. You know, I was researching, going through LinkedIn, different platforms to find certain directors or certain, you know, people who work in that company and reach out to them. It was just one of those things where it was like, I'm going to try to figure this out on my own. And what was the, like, before even reaching out to those brands, did you think about, you know, being a photographer, one of the things that's is wild is like, how, how do you turn that actually into a career or sure. be like, what does it mean to be a photographer? Are you shooting like weddings and shit or are you shooting for brands or are you shoot like did you have that talk with yourself of what what does this actually mean to be a photographer and then take those steps sure i mean i never really called myself a photographer until i knew i was sustaining income and living solely off that off my own career Mm. so i do look at other people and who they call themselves photographers but they got two or three other jobs like i respect the grind but you're not going to go tell someone he's a lawyer because he understands law but doesn't actually like <laughs> get paid for that, you. man. True. Yeah, I mean, it was, for me, it was reaching out to brands and creating images for their pages. And a lot of it was their own photographers, you know, their iPhone photos. I was like, let me create some stuff for you guys. And back mm-hmm. then, I mean, the value of images, you can make $30, $40 an image mm. per image. And, you know, you got 20 or 30 of those per brand. I mean, you're pulling some money. What, what were you saying to them? I'm just curious. Like, the cold email or the cold call is such, oh, a, be- it, such a beautiful thing. It was but, yeah. first tough Woo. to do. It was more of like, Woo. you know, a little intro, introduce myself, explain who I am. And then just kind of break it down to... Did you have a following at that point? Because I feel like everybody in this day and age is like, let's see what their reach is. Let's see how many followers they have. This was before that all happened. Like, this was brands where they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, what is wow. this? Like, this is so new to us. Like, people were not out, like, reaching out. So you were outside. ahead of the curve in that in that. I was literally of- walking up with it. Because I learned through, like, the sports industry endorsements and, you know, creating content. Mm. And even putting it on your page. Like, I found some brands who's willing to give me $100, $150, you know, at a smaller following to promote on my page. You know, create that kind of your own vibe and create, you know, here, here's our product. Now let's let's see how you do it through your feed. Mm. And I was making money through, you know, little sponsor posts here and there. And I was, you know, creating content for other brands and, you know, commercial brands, things like that. Um, I just got ahead of the system and le- learned a lot just, you know, through trial and error. It wasn't like a little book on how to be a social influencer or how to make money. It was how the fuck am I going to do this and what is going to work and what's not going to work. I mean, after 100 emails, I mean, you get like two or three back and say, yeah, sure. I mean, it's a lot of no's. So yeah. you either, you know, say you take that as a negative thing. You're like, I guess I'm not good enough to be a photographer. I'm, I'm done. But not everyone's not, not every, everyone's not for everyone, you know? Yeah. Like some of those people who like your work, who like you, that your personality, how you portray yourself to them as, mm-hmm. you know, a 21 year old, you know, business owner in a sense. I mean, yeah. they figure out like this kid's got some talent. Let's try him out. Absolutely. Then I started, you know, really understanding how to talk to brands. And I felt like I was getting a lot of success. Like every email was kind of, yeah, we want to work with you kind of thing. <sighs> What'd that start feeling like? It was nice, man. It was nice to start making thousands of dollars, you know, a month just 
Are Both. you still in Arizona right now? I'm still in Arizona, man. At your, I, at your I did parents? that. Yeah. Well, I learned a lot about myself. I mean, I learned about, you know, dieting. I was, you know, meal prepping. And, you know, I held a schedule. Wake up at 7 a.m., meal prep. You got, you got your eating. By 11, I'm at the gym. Like, you know, two hours later, I'm home, and I'm still grinding. And by that time, I'm figuring out times to go shoot, go down, because it is hot as hell outside. I'm not going to go shoot in the middle of the day. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those things I got to work around. And, like, <clears throat> being in Arizona, like, you ain't going out to shoot till like, 8 or 9. And I feel like, you know. Well, what was it for you that, that made you so structured? It was just a lot of self-discipline, a lot of trial and error. Like, no one really told me how to work with brands. It was more of just from past experience or trying to just – doing what I feel like is right yeah, and, you know, just staying in my lane kind of thing and just focusing and building on that. And after getting momentum and that's like, feel like that, that self success where you feel like you're doing a lot of good stuff. Absolutely. I feel like I just kept working more harder and, you know, talking to more people and, you know, just building it off from different things. Um, and then, you know, platforms started coming in where you had access to more brands just through different things. And I really saw like the success people really reaching out and, doing a lot of work and I was like you know it's something I could really do full time um so I was literally every month for six months I just saw an extra thousand come in my account just every month I, it, was, it was more success by June I was like I'm ready to move out you know I was That's like lit. I was like I need to move out of my house like I think I'm ready to like do my own thing like I was looking for houses were your parents starting to see this traction they were they was were, it still like they okay. were for months they were like what are you doing? We see you making some money. Oh, you have more packages coming into the house. Like, what's going on? Yeah. But then they're like, all right, like, failure, the failure to launch, like, you know, the movie where you're just, he's 30 years old, stuck in his parents' house. Like, I never wanted to be that person. Like, Straight up. I moved out of my house at 18, and that's what I, I wanted to that, have that, you know, to be, to be myself. I wanted the independence. To, the independence. Yeah. And so, like, when I moved back to, you know, Arizona, I was like, I want that back. Mm. So I wanted to make that money. I was looking, you know, literally that day I was looking for a place in Scottsdale. And one of my homies from Orange County who, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a creative director. He, you know, influencer too. He's like, we're moving to L.A., what do you think? I'm like, bro, like, that was my conservative self. Like, I don't know. Like, I love L.A. I got some family out here, but I never thought I'd move to L.A. I'm like, bro, like, I think I'm just going to two-bedroom for my own self in Scottsdale. Like, it's like 1100 I'm making that. I'm good. Like, I'm staying conservative. He's like, all right, bro, just let me know in the morning. Literally sleep on that, wake up in the morning. I'm like, bro, I'm coming to fucking LA. That's he goes, really? Oh, shit, man. yeah. Well, okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> it, 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 it all hold happened. Up, hold up, hold, hold up. up. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that? Like you slept on it and then boom, I feel you. It was more like I thought about it, but also the idea of I've come a long way for six months. I see this income. The I, idea is... I moved to LA, I believe I can double that. Just so, with the people around me and like just the passion that people had around in Los Angeles, I felt like that was the best thing for me. Were, were the brands you were working with, were they in Arizona? Like was everything a based A couple, in Arizona? but a lot of, some of them were out here. I mean, a good friend of mine, Rob Craig, over at Young and Reckless, like I was doing some work with them mm. and I was like, I, I mean, brands like that, I was like talking to Nixon the day before. I was like, these are really cool opportunities I can do. And if I feel like I moved to LA, I have the beaches. I have so I have like a beautiful city. Like I always felt like Arizona was a great place to grow up and kind of just learn yourself. There's not a lot of distractions. Mm. But I was ready for that grind. I was ready to be put in that place where it was, you know, to move to a city where it's just grind and then people are really making things for themselves. And I was I was scared, but at the same time I was excited because that was my independence again. So you felt like by going, yeah, man, that's crazy. It was a big move. I that's mean, crazy. I mean, I, I did the move from Arizona to DC and that first was tough to like be on your own in a completely different state. No, no one kind of thing. Yeah. Moving to California was like, I always thought about living in California as a kid mm. and being able to live in LA and live the LA dream. Like that was hype. And at yeah. the same time, that'd be kind of cool to show everyone back in high school who really didn't give a fuck about me. Like, Moving out to Arizona, moving from Arizona to like LA and yeah, doing my thing. Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, like it was all for me. So what was the conservative side initially? Like just like that initial fear. It was the fear of like not being successful, the fear of failure. Mm. And I felt that too many times growing up where it was like, 
I never want to feel that way again. And am I making the wrong decision moving to LA and, and not making, you know, having success? Mm. But majority of myself is that young, ignorant, you know, stubborn kid. He says, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna, I'm all, I'll figure out a way." Yeah, you know, I, I was still you have gr- up to this point. I was still making good money. Yeah, and I had I saved up like ten grand before moving to like LA, so I kind of was smart. Like even though I was building up to being a photographer, I didn't just move out to here like on a whim. Mm. Like I had my my money saved up. Like I'm, I was a street smart kid. I understood like. If I fuck up one month, I still have more money, like, yeah. saved up where I can get my place, security deposit, get my yeah. stuff. Like, I had a couple of months to get settled in. Yeah. yeah, you're not just like, fuck it, I'm moving to L.A. Yeah, Peace. And I got $20 here, in like, my no. pocket. Like, yeah. let's go. Let's go. I'm going to make American it. American dream like, over No, no, no. Here. Yeah. No, moved to L.A. And, and had a passion that I come out here and really going to make better of myself, you know? I, I used to go out and party a lot. Like, even back in Arizona, moved to L.A., I can count how many times I've been out. Like, I don't drink because I love the idea of using that time to go out and photograph or pursue passion or staying late at night and just you research on new brands you reach out to and do work for. Like, I want to fucking stay busy. I want to hustle hard. I want to make good money. But in the day, like, living in L.A. makes me happy. I live around creative people. I see great, great people. I've been around the world through photography. Like, I never thought I would be to thailand i never thought i'd be to china like those are places like i never thought it would actually happen yeah and it was so real just through photography and like the people who i met around here just even day three ending up at ty lopez's house and being asked to come back two months later like it was so real to like see like like mama we made it kind of thing straight like, up let's 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 get into that <laughs> we're not we're not breathing over that yeah. let's go baby so from that moment to when you actually Moved to LA. What was the time period? Oh, 24 hours. Oh, literally. You, you, yeah, you woke day, up. And you're like, woke up, called my roommate, my, my future roommate, and I said, Bought the ticket. I said, fuck it. I'm driving out to Arizona. Oh, Packed my bags, go. came out here. That day. Two days wow. later, we found a place. I was like, all right, let's go. Where'd, Back you, stay, where'd you stay for the first two days, though? My, my parents, uh, his, his, my, my friend's house over in Orange County. Gotcha. So we come out to LA, look around, nothing. Go back. Research, come back out with with Starbucks across the street. We're like, dude, this Park La Brea, like we thought it was too expensive. We can get a place around here. Literally go that day, sign the lease. Next day, go back to Arizona, pack all my shit up, head back to LA and just grind. Just go. Dude, I was I was I was feeling it. I was I was I had a fire because I saw the consistency I was getting. And I I was always big about consistency. Like I'm not gonna move out there if it was one big month, one low month, like I want to be sure. So when I had like this momentum, I'm like, fuck it. It's on. Yeah. Just mm. go. You know, like it, it was, it was a crazy jump, you know, just Absolutely. say, fuck it. Like my friends were out in LA, they're already doing it. And they're just like, come with us, bro. And I'm just like, all right, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. And then I never look back. Like I love living in LA. Like I love the city. I love the creative people. I love the grind. I always say iron sharpens iron. And then you're around creative people, like, they're going to push you. Absolutely. And back in Arizona, I feel like there wasn't those photographers, those influencers, like, everyone was 9 to 5 kind of thing. How important was it for you to, like, start building that community of creatives? So big. Because I've always fed off on, like, affirmation. Like, you work with hard, real, like, good people and they see you working hard, like, you guys compliment each other. Mm. And you feed off that. Absolutely. Like, it's not just... You telling yourself good job of other people seeing that success and kind of like boosting you up too that 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 pushes you too, man. And you can take that in a positive way or take it in a bad way where you get ignorant and cocky. Mm. And I've always tried to stay humble and try to like stay in my lane because end of the day, I wanted to be that kid to you know be you for who you are. That's mm. my father always told me. Absolutely. So I always kept in my mind of you know going forward. That's how I want to portray myself as a photographer, influencer, how I portray my content is, you know, to be a genuine good kid. And, like, who cares if, you know, the person who's reaching out to you has 100 followers and they love your work. Like, I take the time to, like, say thank you. Because end of the day, That's like, incredible. you know, end of the day, I don't want to be that cocky kid who came from, you know, who came from something. But when all the way down. from exactly where X person is. Yeah. Right? Like, I was there, too. But at the same time, like. I didn't want to be that kid who grew up and, and became something and just turned to a douchebag because wow. too many of those kids like neglected me. Yeah, absolutely. And so definitely 
you know, humbling to be where I am today. Absolutely. And to work with a lot of creative people and a lot of cool opportunities. And it's great to see, you know, and it's crazy to get DMs that, like, you're my favorite photographer, you know, you inspire wow. me. Like, it's crazy to think that I'm someone else's, like, hero. That's fucking wild. And, like, that's something I never thought I would be. Yeah. Me being a punk ass kid when I was little, yeah, yeah. you know, inspiring someone else to do something. Yeah. And that's why I have my, you know, create on my hand is, you know, inspired to create and create to inspire, mm. you know, everything I do and the things I want to create to, you know, show people is like, get the fuck up and do something, you know? Goddamn yeah. right. And we you know this is the industry where, and this is the time for all of us is you can make an industry and a name of yourself for doing absolutely nothing there. You can do a lot of things for being who you are, if you just be genuine. Yeah. Absolutely. And so a lot of people are conservative, nine to five, and you know, I respect that. I can never go back to that, though. Let me ask you something. Outside of the transition to L.A., um, and also, like, having that, that belief instilled in you at this point where it's, like, be yourself and be good person and also, like, focus on your craft. Sure. Because it seems like all of these things are kind of, like, snowball affecting within you which is like creating this character where you're yeah. like look i need to focus on me i need to focus on my craft i need to be great at what i do i need to find great people around me that are also great at what they do so we can all build you know a lot of people come to la and they're like la man it's just like everybody's so fake and whoop de whoop de woo <laughs> and all this different shit right <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like everybody, everybody's yeah, a fucking victim out of nowhere. Like I can, LA is so fucking all this. Coming into this, in, into this realm, did you face that, or was, is it more so of like you were just already so ingrained in your work that it was just a natural gravitation towards those that were creating on your level definitely i think it came from like the whole idea of college like when you are you people gravitate towards you because they generally like who you are moving out to la it was the same thing you know i i met some great people who gravitated towards me i gravitated towards them and i really saw them as brothers yeah and moving out to la like you found people who really fucked with you yeah and then you look at it la is a big city but it's a giant click. Everyone who's doing something and everyone who like is working hard and who's out here re doing real shit, you see them everywhere, man. Yeah. And so like it's a small fucking world. It bro. is, man. Like it you, is. you'll meet somebody and they'll be like, "Oh shit, you know X, Y, Z word." Yeah. You start to see these communities are really dense. You know what I'm saying? So it's the idea of being in that kind of click and niche and like people accepting you at like being brand new to LA. Like yeah. I wanted to come to LA. And be a uh, you know make a name for myself. I wanted to come in here, and, and show off like, hey, I, if I could you know be a good top photographer in, in, in Arizona, and there wasn't too many, I'm gonna come to LA do the same thing. And I knew coming in there was a lot of big people, oh, yeah. and I wanted to be you know the top dog. I wanted to be and I wanted to compete. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business. At the end of the day, like you're competing about other people for those opportunities, working for brands, yeah, um, and different opportunities. It's like what separates you from the next dude, or exactly. what, or why would I pay you X? And there's of a money? lot of big dudes, but they're just too cocky, yeah. And you can tell, like they have good content, but like people mm. don't fuck with them like they used to. Mm. Word. And it's the idea of you being genuine and you being you, and you thankful and humble for where you've been and how far have you come, yeah. And being and kind of giving back. I mean, people really respect that, absolutely. And that's what makes it enjoyable. Man. Man, I mean, yeah. in the day, like, I love photographing. I love creating content. I love, you know, doing stupid shit to make some images happen. Yeah. But in the day, I mean, I've gotten, you know, it's, you're inspiring others, you know, if it's people who are down or, or, you know, contemplating their life. I mean, I've had those DMs where it's like, dude, I was hating my life and, but I saw this image and it really woke me up. And that's wow. like, it's crazy to get some of that stuff where it's like the things I create or just Absolutely. makes their day better just through what I can do when I'm enjoying myself, like yeah. I'm enjoying myself and work and I'm man. helping you, like I'm blessed. That's an know? infinite added value, bro. I want to, I want to kind of talk to you about these two paths. Um, one, the growth in your creativity, right? And yeah. your constant growth, because it's like from where you started to where you are now, it sure. took a lot of, whether it's study or whether it's practice or whether it's dedication, sure. right? I want to talk about that element first, and then I want to go into the aspect of understanding the digital space, right? Because yeah. to make an influence, I feel like 
Not only in your in your world, not only do you have to be great at your craft and consistently understand where the bar is and how you're challenging yourself sure. and competing with your peers, but it's also like the ones that really shine through are the ones that are able to navigate the digital world because those are two things in, in, in your canvas of your career that constantly perpetuate, right? Yeah. And you seem like you're far more of like the rogue type. You didn't go to photography school and all this shit. No. How did you, how was that like learning curve for you? And what did you do to just keep getting better? Sure. It was a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. I mean, YouTube was a great source of just learning maybe editing techniques. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it was going out and experimenting with your camera and understanding your device. And, you know, trying different things out and, you know, incorporating different elements into your image to kind of give it a different feed. Um, before, I mean, it was me looking up other photographers, other street photographers, because I didn't feel like I was there yet to be, you know, you know, acceptance of myself like I really made it. Yeah. It was me looking up to other photographers and seeing other people like really doing some cool things that I wanted to kind of mimic. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, doing that a lot of trial and error and kind of like mirroring those you know the final products i started understanding a lot more photography mm. and being able to understand and shoot with other people and kind of just bounce off what you know how to work a camera how to shoot or you know just collaborations but moving forward now i mean i i look up to a lot of you know nature photographers or landscape photographers something that i'm not really into oh wow but you know the more the street photography i don't really look up to anyone i always now i stay you know, in my lane, like my wife, my dad always says, you know, be you, stay you, like everyone Straight loves up. you. So everywhere I go, there might be spots people have always hit, but I always try to create something unique and different and, and with my own twist, not try to, cause I mean, in the day I do, it bugs me to see people copy other people's work. Yeah. I mean, it's art and you just blatantly just copy it. It's, it's no longer, you, you know, your art and photography. It's like yeah. you can you can mirror someone's photo pretty easily now. So when I go to spots or different places, I always try to not look at other people's street photography because then it would just inspire me. Yeah, right, right, like right. Like right. inspiring yourself and, and pushing yourself to be unique. Absolutely, and especially that, when you get to a point. Yeah. Because right? I feel like in, 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 in the novice levels, you kind of need to. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to, because like at the end of the day, I, I, I truly feel like this concept of originality doesn't exist sure just from the standpoint of we're all inspired and influenced by things that we've seen in our life sure when it comes to originality um which is why you you've reached your you like original when it comes to a jacob fisher product yeah. or photo or 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 depiction of of whatever it may be definitely is that everything yes it is inspired but originality comes from when you're creating and your craft stems from all of your experiences. And emotion too, like what you're going through and like oh, yeah. how your day is going. It's it's interesting, like through heartbreak or through you know, enjoyment or happiness or something, yeah. you can see your work bleed through, you know, oh, your yeah. emotions and, and and that's how it goes. I mean, that's why you think about football athletes, like when they go to the NFL, like they're their own biggest fan. Yeah. I mean, it's not cocky or ignorance. It's just believing yourself that you're the best. Yeah. You and that's to. why I look at myself as my own inspiration in, in my own niche. I look at other people in that different niches and I'm just like, damn, they are fucking good. I can look up to them as, you know, these great creators. Mm. Yeah. But if I would keep looking at myself as in my niche and look up to other photographers in the same niche who, you know, I look up to, I'll never feel like I'm, the, I'm the best or I don't, word. I don't believe in myself. Did you have mentors in the photography game or no. like word? I, it was that whole, it was being afraid of asking people for help or like, at, like reaching out. It was me being that kid who just wanted to figure out shit on his own. I was, yeah. you know, mm. being a kid and getting his Legos <laughs> or building shit. I always tossed out the instructions and would just, you know, figure it out on my own, put pieces together. That doesn't work, put pieces together. Mm. That looks right. Yeah. That's how I went through life. It trial and error. Trial, trial and, and error. error. Trial I mean, error. but in the day, like it was a tough life because I used up more energy and more time and, you know, I had to do maybe my homework four times over to get it right. But 
it would have been a lot easier if I sat down and read a book, but what's the fun of that kind of thing? I feel you. What's crazy is like we live in, especially with photography, we live in an age where you could watch YouTube videos to learn how to do anything. And there's Instagram where literally everybody is a photographer. Yeah. yeah. Every single day. And I'm just thinking, how do you really separate yourself from the pack in terms of there's the the art aspect of it, but to really reach that next level and, and, and height because it's so easy to bullshit. like an influence. Yeah, yeah, because there's, like, it's so easy. I, feel, I just feel it's so easy to bullshit in your industry as being a good photographer. Yeah. Like a lot of people like, yo, I'm, I'm going to throw on this filter. I'm going to run it through Photoshop. Yeah. I'm going to adjust the brightness and whatever, do some shit. Sure. And, all of a, and, like, and then throw it up. And they're like, oh, my God, to the common spectator like you're so good i love this art you're like really that's just like this effect on illustrator <laughs> yeah. like filtering I mean, you have shit. a lot of big photographers who are crazy edits and they're really good and talented people but sure. i don't see them as influencers they're just great photographers with big following but it's always in the day like how do you reach out back to your like your fans like the people who look up to you like and also carve give yourself. back exactly like i want to leave a legacy like it was always me making a name for myself mm. and i always said like i never wanted to be known as brett fisher's son i wanted to be known as you know there's jacob fisher and there's his dad kind of thing like, yeah I, I was always striving to create a name for myself and feel that self-success and people look up to you and look at you as like damn this kid's really good and he's willing to take his time to chat with me like this kid's real word when you when when you consider influence right because there's a fine line between just being good at what you do yeah. and also influencing the culture, influencing your peers. Yeah. How important is, is understanding of the digital space? Because I feel like in today's day and age, you can't just be great at something. No. Like A lot of people say just be great and people will come. Sure. But I feel like we're in an era where being great and people will come, that's one in a billion because there's so much clutter and there's so much access. Sure. Right? And, and you have to be great just to compete, too. Yeah. A lot of people are really good, but how did you start building your brand? Your brand. Yeah. Because you're working yourself. You're constantly getting better at your photography. Was there a point where you're like, yo, I really need to understand this, like, digital landscape real quick sure. and need to understand how to build my following need to understand how to speak to my following because all of these things kind of are learned no yeah i mean you you see now in college like they're writing books on how to be a social influencer how to run social media accounts but i'm like, sure there's gonna be college courses on that shit but that shit's already outdated like social <laughs> media is ever changing i mean you have your clothing lines and like those trends that happen once or twice a year because of social media Every month could be a new trend. Absolutely. So there was the idea of kind of thinking of myself as the shit in a sense where it was like, I'm going to build my own brand, create a brand around myself where I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay me. I'm going to keep focusing on me and hopefully it picks up. I mean, it was working with, you know, you know, collaborations and, you know, really working with other people and, and teaming up because on the day, I mean, two is stronger than one. Absolutely. So the power of, you know, linking up with people and teaming up and really working together, I mean, you definitely create a name for yourself right there. Mm. But, you know, creating a brand for myself, it was definitely something to understand because I, I was in the learning process as well. While Instagram and social media is growing and evolving, I am also trying to adapt to that. Absolutely. And so it's the whole idea of grinding because every day you're not promised money in your, in your account yeah see i learned that whole mentality of every day is a grind and if there's new trends or you know new things popping up you better hop on that real quick and, <laughs> and understand and tackle that Absolutely. because if not you'd be left back and i love that idea of never feeling comfortable mm. and you can wake up and and wake up on your own time and if you push yourself up and wake up earlier and you're up before everyone else and you're a grind and you're hustling i mean you're working hard yeah. and every day. I mean, there's a lot of people and out the here. The results are going to show. It may not yeah. happen instantaneously, but it's like, again, it's an accumulation of all the steps or all the work that you put and you in. You might be told no too many times, but it's the, it's the yeah. idea of, do I give up or am I going to keep pursuing this passion mm. of mine that I love? Yeah. And someone's going to say, yeah, we fuck with your work Word. or yeah, we want to bring you on board and let, let's create and let's, let, let, let's, let's do something amazing together. Absolutely. And a lot of brands, I mean, First, it was just making quick money, but now I see the upside of 
I mean, end of the day, I mean, I love photography, but do I want to do this forever? No. But I, do I want to, like, create businesses? I, do I want to grow along with businesses and really create an name for myself in the industry? Hell yeah. Where do you, so with that, to that point, where do you see your evolution going? I mean, since I moved to L.A., I, I knew photography and social media, it can come and go. I mean, we see Vine. It popped up for two years. They closed their doors. Yeah. That was wild. Right? And so the wild. idea of people who made I mean, so look, much money. Snapchat <laughs> and then Instagram's coming out and just whapping them. So you don't know. Like, people who are Snapchat famous and they don't adapt to their platforms, they're fucked. They're gone. Like, Snapchat can close their doors tomorrow. What am I going to do? Where's my income? You know, I'm mm. fucked. Because everyone is reliant on social media and the internet. What if the... And it dies. So now it's for me building a team out here. It's the reason why I came out here is to be associated with these creative people yeah. and bringing them on board and working with them and saying, you know what, we all vibe together, we can live together. And it was weird to be able to live with people who you work like can really work with. Because growing up and having roommates, like yeah. we were homies, but living in with each other, we never, never saw eye to eye. It was yeah. always these fights. But living with these people, like I don't remember, the, you know, we fought maybe once. Mm. It's almost a year, bro. Like you are around the same people who love what you're doing and push you and support it. Like you know the brothers, and you know you can work with them for a long time. Yeah. So I'm out here just building and and building a team and and the day. I mean, if media and content is not something that's always going to be there, I mean, you think about real estate and cars. Like those are things I definitely want to invest in in the future and being own be able to own businesses and and things because. I don't think cars will ever go out of business. I don't think real estate will ever go out of business. And those are things like being 23 to think about that. Like a lot of kids Young out here boy. are still partying right now. Like yeah. I'm thinking about the future. Cause like, do I, what do I want to be? What do I want to do when I'm 30? Do yeah. I want to be traveling the world and slaving away or, you know, for a company or can I just be traveling the world and, and just living life and kicking back because I built these businesses and I was able to work hard now. Like, these fucking from 21 to you know 29 those are the years to grind your ass yeah. and, and figure out who you want to be like end of the day when you're 30 you can go get a nine to five job like it, it'll be there for you you'll figure it out yeah but if right now those are the years where you're trying to figure out can i make a name for myself can i build my own brand can i be successful be the entrepreneur and you know be your own person these are the years to fuck up absolutely i want to ask on that too one i think uh as a photographer, I'll say it from my opinion, in my perspective, actually, is a better word. I see you as an artist. I think there's a lot of artistry in being a photographer. Sure. Yeah. And um, that could be you on your own time, or it could be how you incorporate it into your work. Sure. Or both, right? But now, thinking about the business of being a photographer, or your particular business, is I kind of want to like just understand your trajectory on on that because there's so many ways kind of like what we were talking about earlier you can go as a photography like you can do like stock photography or you can shoot for brands or there's so many angles how do you see like your business as a and your team building around photography and Definitely. developing because even going back to like how you started in LA you can't just think I, I I've always believed you can't just think of yourself as like a freelance person no. right always think of yourself as a business, like detach you from something bigger than you. Of course. Because th like that's always step one, how I've thought about thinking about business in general or making money. Yeah. You got to think of something. If, if you're you, you're going to get stuck in doing a million things and odd jobs and that's crazy cycle. Yeah. Moving to LA and, and starting off here and, and now and then moving into the future, kind of paving that, um, that roadmap. Mm-hmm. What was that for you in terms of your direction in photography, in terms of the business aspect? Did it separate from the art aspect or was it, did they go in one or did you have to keep it separate so you wouldn't resent the art like side or like how do you, I, I, I kind of want to hear your perspective on, on that world. I definitely keep it separate. I mean, so with that, I love creating content for brands that I could see be put up on their, you know, feeds and things like that. What was really humbling was some work I did for a company, a client I did for mine, and that image I actually they created, put up in every single Zoomies at, at the storefront across wow. the U.S. That's beautiful. And that was something cool, just like have that like self appreciation, saying my work and my style and the way I portrayed this product, and I wanted to tie my my aesthetic, my style, is now in every single Zoomies at the front of the window across the U.S. 
like that was fucking crazy insane yeah but then i keep my personal photos the days that i don't want to shoot product or shoot for brands or shoot for clients for myself mm. for my you know my creative personality you know to, to strive to create dope backgrounds for myself i mean yeah think about it as a kid when i had my first iphone you had the little hd wallpaper app and you're like these photos are sick but the idea of what if i can create cool images and put people and have my images on people's walls and in phones like crazy stuff absolutely so i definitely keep those separate because my work that i do on my side that i do for fun is my passion and and the things that i love to do if i you know it pushes to me you know i push myself to the edge where I can put myself in harm or, you know, I'm climbing rooftops or climbing cranes or running through subway trains. I mean, getting a gun pulled on me, shooting late at night. Like it's a shit that I do for fun for myself. Yes. I put myself in harm, but end of the day, you know, you, you live once, but you're also creating this content that, you know, you're really enjoying for yourself. You're throwing yourself in the trenches. And that's, that's something I, I felt like I've always was in as a kid and I, I loved fighting against that sometimes. Yeah. I'm always always a fighter. Mm. So I mean, in the day, like what I do on the side for myself, I'll do whatever I need to do, you know, for that self appreciation and that that self fulfillment that you still of need. Course. Going back to kind of like how you talked about you you didn't want to make like your passion a business. No, because, it was it was yeah. the fear of yeah, neglecting when, what I love to do. And when your passion kind of becomes your job, you have to be careful of like not fucking hating your passion now you're like god damn like i need it because with the pressure of making money and doing this and then sometimes you have to do shit that you don't like and you're like oh god of course you gotta suck up and deal with it because end of the day like unfortunately the world works around money if you want to live you want to feel comfortable you 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 want to eat and enjoy a good lifestyle you gotta bust your fucking ass to make money but when you have that money set aside so you can live you have the time to do what you really came out here to do. And that's, you know, to live your life and experience and travel and, you know, live on the edge that you feel like, you know, you need to do. Because if I combine those two and then photography ends up being something I hate, what's my purpose now? Mm. Because on the day when I'm creating this content that I love to share with people, like it's saving people's lives. Like it's inspiring people to get the fuck up and go do something. Absolutely. And so I definitely keep those separate. That's lit. I want to ask you one, like on a, on like a final note here, because I feel like it, it's been such a gorgeous. Like, if you were to write a postcard, actually, if you were to write a letter to a fan that asked you, you know, what should I do, right, or how'd you do it? Yeah. What What advice would you give them? To be a photographer, or to like be a photographer and move out to LA. Just to be a photographer. If somebody wanted to pursue it full time, full time, yeah. Even what, even if it's a fucking thirty five year old dude that has yeah. a day job, it's like, bro, I want to shoot. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm I'm more the conservative side, and sometimes I am the whole just go out and fucking do it. But at the same time, like, you got to be smart about your life because if you neglect your day job and you can't get back to that, and now you're homeless because you want to pursue something, like, it'll be tough to like push yourself through that. But being able to manage both you know, half and half until you start seeing that progression where it yeah. starts evening out. And then when it, your photography starts really pushing up to be a higher income than what your day job is, fucking go do it, man. I love that you said that. Yeah. Guy. Like, because so many people are like, I need to like not work and just yeah. like, I need to I just pursue it. Say, yeah. I fucking love It's such a practical, pragmatic that. way. It, but especially coming from somebody that throws himself in the trench. Sure. Right. And I want to end on this. If 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 Jacob now can write a postcard to young Jacob, what would you tell him, you as a kid, knowing what you know now? Yeah. I guess it's when you believe in your like in yourself and you have that gut feeling that's something you enjoy. You know, really focus on that and don't 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 neglect and don't focus on other things. That's can only last for a short term time. I mean, really focus on something that is going to last for forever that you enjoy that, you know, that makes you fucking happy. And that really makes, that really inter- makes you really who you are. Like if I picked a different industry and that really wasn't me, I wouldn't be me. I would be, you know, faking it. Yeah. But now that I found something that I, I love to do and I'm me and I could be me, I could hang out with dope people and I, 
and I make a great living out in Los Angeles. Like, how many 23-year-olds can come out here and, and move on a fucking whim and live out here, man? And get it. And get it. Like, it, and a lot of come out, people come out here to say, I'm going to be an actress, an actor. Yeah. But what experience do you have? Yeah. And what they, are you they, What are you doing? Cause, they, cause, they struggle. Cause it, sound, it sounds good. Oh, living the shit. L.A. dream, and, you know, you, you move here, you're going to make it. It's, it's all hype. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, as a kid, a lot of it was just doing it without thinking kind of thing. Yeah. But, you know, growing up and learning a lot and, you know, you know, after, you know, bruises and beaten, you know, tears were shed and blood. I mean, you, you finally understand, like, fuck, my parents were right. You know, they kind of say, you know, just stay you, be you. Yeah. And at the same time, you got to be, you got to be street smart. You got you to gotta th- be logical. Yeah. You can't just go fucking do pick up being a lawyer if you didn't go to fucking law school, yeah. man. <laughs> It's the same idea. Straight up. No, I agree. You know, I want to say this last thing. Get it. You're so young. Yeah. And you're like, I'm 34, homie. When you're so young and you're just getting started, yeah. even if you don't even think so, you may. No, may, I you know, may know I'm it. just getting I hope started. You know I know I I'm just getting you know started. This is oh, year one. And, yeah. Grandpa, grandpa, <laughs> grandpa Joe's about to tell you. Uncle Nushi and Grandpa Joe over here. <laughs> but I'm telling you, bro, I'm t- I'll give you that dad talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I can't wait till we have you back on in a couple years from now yeah. because I already know your life yeah. and the way you're moving and how you're moving yeah. is going to be so different yeah. in, in a fucking amazing way. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. I can't wait to hear that story. Definitely. Right. My brother, you're an absolute blessing. And to be dead honest, I, I love you for who you are. Thank you, man. Like who you are is a star that shines very bright in my eyes. And... I'm absolutely enamored by your creative ability. And even more so, it's it's something where I truly love the human being that you are. And that's paramount over everything. And, you know, in my eyes, you made it, baby. And yeah. you're making it. I know. You Beautiful. know what I'm saying? I legit talked to my roommate about that today. We're about to be on a year since I moved out to LA. That's fucking incredible. And we looked at each other and we're like, Bro, we're just getting started. Like year one, we fucked the shit out of that, yeah. and we just started, man. Like yeah. we're still growing up. I'm still getting the feel of LA. Like I'm not even reached my full potential. Like I wow. feel like even looking back on my old work, yeah. my work is only gonna get better. Yeah, the way your potential I carry is myself infinite, and the name for myself, brands like even brands or opportunities are really gonna be there. You got and my whole right. mindset of first being me and understanding who I am and creating a name for myself. Now I created this traffic around myself where I can bring in other big people and say, yo, let's team up. Like, let's work together on a, a bigger scale. Because I was with my homies last night and 21, 22, 23-year-olds combined their Instagrams, 50 million reach. And I'm like, y'all are fucking doing something smart. I wish I thought the way you did. Yeah. But just thinking, they're fucking a team at 20 years old with the 50 million reach. And at the end of the day, if we want to consistently be content creators, do we want to shoot for bullshit brands or do we want to you want to work big projects with like Red Bull. You got to have a big production. You got to have a big team. You have people around you who can handle each like task. Absolutely. And, Everybody that, and that's what I'm focusing on now. First was me moving to LA and figuring out how can I make it. Yeah. And now I'm trying to figure out I can still do my own thing on the side. But it's so much better when you can team up with people who love and like enjoy the same passion as you guys. Yeah. And do something. Like the biggest things I love to do is road trips with homies. Right. Where you're all going out four or five, six hours. Just driving because end of the day, you guys know you're gonna be creating, you're gonna be laughing, yeah. doing something that you love to do. Absolutely, and that's the beauty of this thing. You're a blessing, bro. Amazing, bro. And Thank I can't you. wait for everybody and anybody in the culture to just hear the story. Whether you're you're trying to be a photographer, or whether you love content, or whether you're just a kid trying to figure it out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. There's something to learn from from everybody's story, um, and it's an honor to be speaking with you about the journey. Definitely, you know what I'm saying? Man. And it's an honor to see how honest you are about you because at the end of the day, it's all it all circles back to understanding who you are and being the best you you possibly can be. Of course. And I didn't understand that until moving on my own, learning self responsibility. You got that. The only right. thing I could tell is everyone is, you know, stay you and be you and and stay focused. I mean, that's why on my ribs I have two arrows. Say, and, and then day means 
you know, stay focused and keep aiming. One trillion. And like, so all the tattoos I have on me, like each one has a meeting from family yeah. to arrow saying you to create, to inspire. Like, and the year I was born, just remember like where you fucking came from <coughs> and you know, you can come from anywhere and you can do what you want to do, inspire others. Some can be on YouTube and crack jokes all day, but that can make someone's day. You're mm. damn right. And with that being said, I want to call your mom and tell her this. <laughs> Mama! He made it!